I laughed a lot um, throughout the film, but I also found myself relating with these characters and seeing everything from their different perspectives as yeah. well. And I just wondered how important it was to maintain a sense of reality and how difficult it is to sort of strike the balance even when there's quite some quite outlandish comedy in there as well. Yeah, that's to me that's the key to these kind of movies, you know, these kind of comedies that you the people are real and they feel grounded and you can relate to them and they're they're going through real human emotions because otherwise you're just sort of watching a bunch of clowns and so um, you know it helps to have this amazing cast but it, you know it's my job to kind of keep my eye on that and you do push the comedy and it goes in crazy places and you want to allow everybody to throw anything out that they can but then bring it back down to earth. And um, you co-wrote Meet the Parents yeah. and the sequels. Why do, do these sort of awkward family situations present such sort of a rich kind of comic scene? I think, like you said, they're relatable. We can all, we've all been in situations like this. You know, this was the idea of taking this, this classic premise and turning it on its head, you know, because power dynamics have shifted and 15 years ago there really weren't guys like Laird Mayhew who were billionaires, you know, but in the last 10, 15 years, suddenly that's who's running the world. And that felt interesting. And, you know, you take this relatable Midwest family, he, they're just a normal family, and I'm sure everybody can go to the movies and go, oh, that dad is like mine, or that mom kind of reminds me of my mom. You know, that's a key for me in these kind of movies. And I love the odd, cu odd couple sort of relationship at the center of the film. What did you enjoy about seeing Brian and James kind of create that on-screen relationship? Yeah, I mean, the beauty is they're both gifted, gifted actors and very funny and, and strong, but they're different, you know? And so when you have two men who are just quite different species, um, mm -hmm. it's fun to watch them interact, you know, because they, uh, Brian is sort of the life of the party and kind of the mayor on the set, and James a little quieter, keeps to himself, because um, that's his energy. He's been doing that his whole career. It's just who he is. And so I love taking two people with disparate uh, tones and energies and throwing them in together. And I think they played off each other so well and really loved each other off the set. You know, they just cracked each other up, but they're totally different. And James isn't afraid of making quite bold character choices, is he? Recently he was filming King Cobra and then a couple of years ago Spring Breakers. Yeah. Um, what for you are his sort of particular talents as a performer? Yeah, you know, I think he, he's a wonderful actor and he can play these outlandish characters, but bring them, bring a humanity to them. And also he's got this mischievous glint in his eyes, so he can take these characters and make them do absurd things, but you, you love him, you relate to him, and, and you kind of want to be him a little bit or be with him. So I think that's a gift that's just innate to who he is. And we don't want to give too much away, but why did you want to include Kiss um, in the movie? Are you a fan? And what was it like having uh, Gene and Paul around? Yeah, you know, I am a fan. I, I grew up on their music and, uh, you know, I thought, you know, we were trying to find the right band that Brian and Megan would be into and, and have this visual statement. What would be fish out of water in Michigan without giving too much away? And so having them on set was insane. I mean, people, when they showed up in the platform boots and the makeup, people were, literally one of the actresses was shaking. She just couldn't, put, it was like, you know, meeting some kind of icon. Um, you know, you, you, you all meet famous people in this business, but not seven footers in, in makeup all the time. <laughs> and I think the um, term toilet humor gets a bad rap sometimes. Yes, it does. Why, why do you think um, we all find humor about bodily functions kind of funny at any age, really, if we're honest? Yeah, if we're on, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, people go, oh, that's gross or whatever. We're, we're not making you gross out. It's it's relatable. This These things happen. I think we all laugh because we it's something that we don't want to talk about, but we experience, and we experience awkwardness. We experience personal hygiene moments. It's just human. And there's nothing funnier to me than kind of laughing at the foibles of our of our human uh, experience. And the film has a Christmas setting. I just wondered which were your sort of movies that would get you in the festive spirit, either nowadays or perhaps from childhood. You know, um, it was more of a Thanksgiving movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is just a beautiful Thanksgiving movie. It's funny and there's ridiculousness, but it's it's very human. And so as a comedy, that's one that I go back to. You know, it's not, obviously everyone loves It's a Wonderful Life, and you know, Home Alone is a great, great holiday comedy too. That that That's one that I go back to. But I'd say Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is the one that I instantly gravitate towards around the holidays. John Hamburg, thanks very much. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!